Neurocritical care is a field of medicine for uh, patients with devastating neurological injuries. Those injuries can include things such as cerebral hemorrhages, strokes, subarachnoid hemorrhages, or things that can affect pulmonary function, like myasthenia gravis. It ranges uh, from meningitis to encephalitis, but it deals with those patients with uh, devastating injuries or circumstances where things are life-threatening. And so there are specialists who are trained specifically for these diseases to give them better outcomes. For example, with cerebral hemorrhage, we know that patients are in the hospital for a less uh, number of days, uh, their outcomes are better. The outcome scales that we use, such as the modified Rankin scores, are better. Uh, they have less comorbid diseases, less infections, less fevers, less pneumonia, uh, and their functional outcomes are better. Here at the Brigham and Women's Hospital, our neuro ICU has the latest technology uh, to take care of our patients. So over the past 25 years, uh, we have continued to develop, improve, and be leaders uh, in this area of uh, intensive care medicine for the brain. A cerebral hemorrhage is a burst of an artery uh, and blood uh, is dispersed uh, throughout the brain. And there are many different types of cerebral hemorrhages, uh, but it is a rupture of an artery. And that could be due to long-standing hypertension, an aneurysm, a vascular malformation, uh, and all are treated in the ICU but in very different ways, depending on the type of pathology that we have to deal with. Cerebral hemorrhage, uh, the thing that we're concerned about the most is swelling. Swelling uh, from the uh, edema, uh, the swelling and edema itself is very dangerous, and the larger the hemorrhage, uh, the more likely they are to have more swelling, and that is devastating. Typically, over the next uh, 24, 48, 72 hours, we will be giving medicines to try to reduce the amount of swelling inside of the cranial vault. Uh, if that swelling uh, is uh, beyond the threshold of what typical medicine can do, we work with surgery for a possible surgical decompression uh, of the, the, the cranial vault uh, as a life-saving procedure. So our number one goal is to save life and to reduce disability. What is being evaluated right now uh, is the use of surgical techniques to put a small catheter within the hemorrhage itself within the brain, draining some of that uh, blood. Uh, and uh, with this endovascular technique, sometimes it may happen at the bedside or more than likely it would happen in the operating room. Uh, the patient would come back up with its catheter. Some patients may receive a blood thinner within that catheter, other patients may not. Uh, we do know that radiographically, the size of the hemorrhage is actually much smaller than uh, before, and maybe we can show that this technique is safe and more importantly effective in reducing the amount of disability when a patient is 90 days out from their cerebral hemorrhage or one year out.